Good afternoon everyone, this is Robin Carter. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator out of Flower Mound, Texas. And today I'm here to share some alternates using the February 2023 Paper Pumpkin Kit named Sunshine and Smiles Paper Pumpkin Kit. First of all, let me welcome all of my existing subscribers. Thank you so much for uh, tuning into my channel. And also to my brand new members. I, I had quite a few members after my unboxing, so I want to welcome you to my channel. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you are new to my channel, I would really appreciate if you would hit the subscribe button below because I will be sharing alternates uh, more than today with this paper pumpkin kit. I usually do two to three uh, different alternates that I share through my channel, so be sure to subscribe so you do not miss those. So today I want to get started by showing you, um, first of all, in my unboxing, I showed you the card bases, but I didn't show you the insides. I didn't even really notice them until I got uh, to putting everything away, and I said, wow, I didn't even miss the um, inside. This one I've already cut up. So one thing that kind of confused me is, okay, if you make this card as is, your inside is going to be here. So if you write there, it's going to be showing your writing. So same thing with the rainbow, same thing with the blue. So what I wanted to do is put my own card bases to them and basically use all the material for a card front. So let me show you what I did for this one. So here is my finished card. It's not much different than the kit itself. Um, Except I did, I mistrimmed it. This was kind of a mistrim. So I added, got some glue there. I added some actually blushing bride. It's not one of the listed coordinating colors, but I thought it went better than the flirty flamingo uh, against this pattern here. Let me get the instructions out of the way. Okay, so this is what I did. So when you get your card up front, now this one I've already cut up, you have that. And then you have the back piece, where's a full piece? Well, I had it all together, I thought. <laughs> Always on the first card, right? So um, let me dig in my box and find the full size one. Here it is. So all I did was I basically first trimmed it at four and well, one sixteenth less than four and a quarter on this side of the hole. Okay, and then I did the same thing here and here and here. That way it left it like four and an eighth by five and three eighths. Okay, so that it almost goes on your card. It depends if you make your own card bases, if it's the same size or not. So... What that does by making it a card front is it leaves us this pretty paper to work with. Now you may be thinking, well, no, we're going to use the rainbow. But actually, I made my own rainbow using the new mini blending brushes. So if you want to save this piece to either use this piece as an alternate or this piece as an alternate, here is how I made my rainbow. So the first thing you'd want to do, I'm not going to go through the whole process because it takes longer for the video. So you want a piece of vellum cardstock and you could trim this down. I just had a full sheet to show you and you want to put it over your rainbow. Okay. And then you're going to take your pencil and you're just going to mark the, the rays. Okay. Just keep doing each one. And then you're going to take this against a white piece of cardstock. And that's going to be how you cut. Now you do want to, I didn't do that here. You do want to mark the, the end as well. Okay. So then you're going to take this and cut your ray. That was not very good. I did it <laughs> way too fast of each one. All right. And when you have that done, then you're going to have your ray pieces. And I put mine in here so I didn't lose them. All right, and I've already watercolor or done some blending with it, trying different colors and such. So you should have, you should make one for each color of the rainbow. 
let's see I guess that one was my this one is the first one and then the yellow orange and no orange and pink okay so this is how I made this rainbow now my up line or my down line excuse me she's like these aren't in the right color the <clears throat> um, red red orange yellow green blue so these two are switched so for this next one I'm going to switch my colors I did this one just like the kit one but we're going to switch our colors so let me get out my components for this card so all these alternates are going to help you wind up with extra cardstock that we will I will be making alternates out of so let me get my card base don't really need it right now <laughs> and then you need a piece of paper and this uh, white paper is four and three eighths by three inches so you'll actually need two of those four and three eighths by three inches and that piece will fit behind here let me get the one that I've already cut behind here okay so you're going to use this to make your rainbow and how you want to get started is you want to put these on your cardstock your little cut piece just like that all right so actually this green went over let me use this as a reference again all right so if that is i think then this one just hangs off the edge just a hair all right so i'm going to take this one away okay so this is going to be where i'm going to do my blue actually because we're going to do it in rg biv order so what i have here is just a bunch of extra paper pumpkin blocks i also have a laminated half of a grid sheet that I will use as we get to more and more colors. So I'm going to get my balmy blue ink spot. All right, and I'm just going to put some color on the block. All right, and I have my blue. These are the mini brushes. And to compare, this is the full size brush. So this mini, excuse me, let me get it better in the camera, is what I've used to help make these rays. So I'm going to pick up my ink just by going in a swirly motion. And then with a light, light touch to start, I'm going to just very lightly start with my rainbow. That way I don't get any blotches. And as I've used some of the ink, then I can get heavier handed. Okay. And my ink spot may be kind of dry, so I may not be getting good color. But with this mini brush, I can just go right along there. Okay, that's pretty good. So now I'm going to take my green, and this is where I'm going to cover this up partially. I'm okay if those colors blend a little, so that's why I'm leaving a little blue showing. So for my green, I have Old Olive, and I'm going to put that down. I hope this isn't shake. it is shaking the camera. My uh, camera is attached to my desk, and the pouncing is causing it to bounce, but I'll do my best to not to. So I pick up all the ink, and then same thing, with a very light hand, I'm going to start just barely touching the paper. That way I don't get any blobs. And then as I've used some of that ink, I'll get heavier and heavier handed. Now you can tape these down if you have a hard time. I'm trying to go fast by just doing that. Okay, so then we have our green. Let me run out of paper here. <laughs> okay, now we need the, I need to leave this over this. Kind of, and then we use our orange one. Okay, and for this, I didn't. I tried mango, and it was way too soft. Um, well, actually, first of all, we have to do daffodil black. Sorry, I jumped ahead. 
So I'm out of mini blocks. So I'm going to use my uh, laminated grid sheet here. I need to do Daffodil Delight before I get to the orange. Let me get this card out of the way. It's hard working in this small space I have for the camera, but we will we'll make it work. Okay, so there's Daffodil Delight. Again, my mini blending brush. And I pick it all up. And then I got a little too much green showing. With a light hand, I start applying the color. And I'm trying to put my arms where you can still see how I'm working. And then as I've laid it down most of it, I can then go heavier handed with it. Okay, so there's our yellow. And now we need orange. And uh, the Mango Melody blended was way too light. So what I pulled out was pumpkin pie. If you don't have pumpkin pie, I'm sure you can use um, your mango. Just maybe go over and over more. So this is a full size ink pad and I just tap it like that to the block. Get my orange dedicated sponge. Let me get set up here with my strips. Now they've gone all over the place. Here it is. So my orange. I'm gonna go here and cover up with my yellow. All right, pick up my orange. That's gonna be a lot because it was better. So I'm gonna rub off some. And then I'll we'll start very light handed with the orange. That was a lot of ink, so I got a little spot there, but it'll be okay. All right, and then I'm going to go heavier handed to really make it orange. And hold these while I get to end here. Okay, so there's our orange. And now we will do our uh, pink. And for that, I did use a coordinating color of 30 Flamingo. Got strips and ink spots all over. So I'm gonna use the bottom part of my laminated grid sheet. And then my pink dedicated mini, um, blending brush and I think I just need to color that I'll go ahead and just make a ray it doesn't matter because it goes into the um, card front let me hold this go light-handed and then go heavier handed so <laughs> you may be like wow this is a lot of work but um, Again, you just need to make three if you're going to make use your supplies, and then you'll have three of the other um, for your alternates. Okay, so that's what you need to do if you're going to follow my alternates is make three rainbows like that. If you don't have vellum and don't want to do the template with vellum and then cutting the cardstock, you can just cut up one of your rainbows and then you'll still have two. Okay, so. All right, so this is an extra. Whoops, don't set it on my laminated sheet. So I have a white card base, and this way, when you go to use this card, you have a white inside versus the rainbow inside. All right, so I made all the components be a card front. So for this, if you want your um, card piece, I'm sure this one's already trimmed, and then you make sure which side of your um, card is maybe a hair longer and mine's that one All right, and then you want to put this under here First of all, I want to make sure I got enough pink I may have to go in with My pink and just fill in this corner right here With some color let me get a little more this is still from my laminate sheet 
Okay. That way it won't be wide in that corner. I like this one. So I switched the colors. What do you think? Now it's more like the true rainbow colors. And don't worry about that this doesn't look like a ray because we're going to put clouds and stuff there. All right, so we're going to put this on the back and I'm going to use liquid adhesive because I'm going to need to move it so it's just right. So this is my Tombow multi-purpose glue, which is this right here that's available in the catalog. And I just put it in a fine tip glue pen. And let's hope it's, it was, it was ready to go. So I'm just putting dots all around the back side of this circle. And then I'm going to put this on there. So get it so, just so nothing else shows. And I'll press down. It may get on my grid sheet, which it did. That's okay. All right, so there is our made rainbow. And we're going to, um, actually, before it dries, real quick, I should have done this ahead, was mark your cloud. Now, this time I'm going to only use two clouds. So before it dries, hopefully, you can slide some of those in there. I'm going to use two clouds down here instead of three to save for alternates. Okay, and then one will go up there, and of course, the cute little chick will go here. <laughs> so that's great. All right, so now we need to work on our sentiment. And I'm going to show you my trick with the Stamparatus of how I do my sentiments. Let me get all these colored blocks out of the way so I don't land the card base in it, which I'm known to do. Let me save my little rainbow pieces for my next one. Okay, let me get my Stamparatus. Okay, so here's my Stamparatus, and I already have the sentiment sheet here on my deluxe mat. And what I do is I line them up where, where I want them, and then I pick them up like this. So these are already here. The sun is I'll sh not supposed to meant to stamp here. I have another template for it. But anyway, the uh, sentiment is where I want it. And then I take off. This one's got a little smudge on it. Magnets are sticking to each other. All right, so I'm going to stick that in there. I have a little piece of washi tape just to hold the end. And there is a direction that these labels go in. So be mindful of that when you stick it in there. That way it's in there flush. Um, actually, this one is you brighten my day. So let's do that one. So this way I move the labels versus move my stamp every time. I put them back in the... Um, empty spot that I stamped one in. Let's see if that washi is too far. Don't think so. But my magnet's hitting my sun. All right, so you want to magnet that down. Now, this one I did in the mango uh, melody. I think I'm going to try it in Memento Black Ink this time. So, I just, I tend to like my sentiments in a dark color. I don't know why everybody has their own preference I've got the magnet there hover just a second to make sure it's kind of where you want it and then press now i did when i do this i do test it blank on my grid mat you can stamp on there and it'll wipe off so long as you're using a water-based ink do not use stays on because it does what it says it stays on and does not come off so <coughs> Excuse me, I had a tickle in my throat. So here's our sentiment. I'm going to put this away. Actually, let me clean. And my chamois is soaking. It was kind of hard, so I'll just use a paper towel and a spritz of water. All right, I'm going to leave that open and put it away while it dries. Okay, so here is our... Card, and I already have a sun 
done. Now, let me show you one possible alternate that I, I didn't do because I'm trying to do these without a bunch of extra supplies. So wherever the card, I have this uh, sun ray stamp and I'm trying, <laughs> I can't think. And I thought that would be nice, except I really didn't like that color with the pink. So that is an option too, if you don't want to do it, go through coloring the rainbows. So I just thought that was kind of neat. It's a sunburst stamp. Maybe I'll find it at the end of this channel or end of this video and let you know the number. All right, so I'm going to glue my stamp. Now they put the sun under, I didn't want, or they actually stamped the sun right on that. And I didn't like that. I put it on white paper and fussy cut it out. And then my uh, cloud here, I'm going to put on dimensionals. And again, I've got some scraps here. Half pieces are fine. If you've watched my videos, you know I cut my large dimensionals in half. All right, I'm going to put my sun glue on. And keep him upside down to keep the glue going. And I've showed you my, my fancy glue holders are medicine bottles. So, <laughs> you know, it works. It keeps them upside down and the glue ready to go. All right, so I'm going to decide I want my sun more and the cloud there. So I'm going to cover up this little bit of pink that's showing. I don't know that clouds can be crooked, but it looked a little crooked to me. All right, same thing with our little chick. <clears throat> Actually, I don't think I put any adhesive under this cloud. So let me just stick him down. And remember, this one I used three, like um, the cards are put together. Oh, good. This is going to use the last of that strip. I have all kinds of scrap dimensional that I'm using up today. Okay, if you have old paper pumpkin uh, dimensionals, you just need to be mindful that some of them are thicker than what they're providing now. So just be mindful and get the same ones. Right, I'm gonna put a cute little chick there, all happy to see the sun. And then my sentiment, same thing I'm gonna put on dimensional. So let me cut me some strips of it. They're long, so I probably just need two. Putting my bits over here and let's not put it upside down. My first one I had the whole card upside down so I had to <laughs> pry it off and re-put it. Um, I don't want him covering up the chick's feet so I'm going to do like I did over there. I'm going to put this one a little higher covering up the cloud line. Okay and there is, if I can get this straight, I know the, the little whimsy lines kind of mess with me. But there is this card, and then we're left with the pink um, opposites, the pink sides to work with. Now, I haven't put any embellishments on. I generally wait till the end and see how many cards I have and which ones I want to use or bring in my own. So just thought I would share that with you. All right, so I'm gonna go on to the next card. This is the one that takes the longest. So um, just be patient if you wanna make your own rainbows, but I think it looks pretty good like they are. And they each will turn out a little different. And I think that's okay. It's nature, right? Rainbows come out. All right, so let's do the next one. Now, this one is the blue card base, and this is what I made. And again, I made it pretty much like the kit, but I didn't want my inside of my card to be rainstorm. So what I did was I used my, the coordinating designer series paper, which by the way, I have a whole 
list of coordinating things that I will show. You can either take a screenshot right now or I can post all of this on my website. It has the item numbers. Let me set it down flat beside each one. And I did leave, leave off the raindrops embossing folder down here. But all of this, if you search for rain or shine on the website, the stampinup.com website, um, the coordinating products for this kit will. And the only other thing is vellum. And of course your basics white. Okay, so this is a piece from the Rain and Shine Designer Specialty Designer Series paper. And as I turn it like that, you can see the glossy part of the rain. So I was going to use this in place of the um, rain that's on the back because you get what I'm saying, right? If, if you were to have this on the inside of the card, where would you write? It's going to show through. So again, I made my own card base. And I will have this to use as an alternate. I'm sure I'll use that side. So we need to cut, and this time I will cut a base so you know what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm going to move this out of the way so I can bring in my stamp and trimmer. Hopefully it's side for my trimmer. Okay, so on the um, cutout side, I want to cut that at four, so this is four and a quarter. That's half of a A2, bring that down a little bit, card. I'm gonna take just one sixteenth off this side because I wanna take equal off each side and then we have this for our next cards, our alternates. Okay, so then I'm gonna flip it and another sixteenth would be at four and one eighth. And I hope my blade, you gotta have a pretty sharp blade to cut these little bitty strips off. Mine's fairly new in there. So, so again, you can go to five and a half and then just the first notch of the 16th and take that off and then flip it around and take another 16th off, which will be five and three eighths. Now I always recommend when you're trimming, if you're pushing up, like don't take it and pull down because your card could move and then it'd be crooked. So if you have it pressed up here, you want to start down low and go into it. That way any pressure is going to keep it straight. Does that make sense? Same thing if you prefer to cut down here, which that measurement's not here. Don't start from the bottom and go up. You want to come up and go down to cut. I hope that makes sense. Just helps keep your um, cardstock straight in the trimmer. All right, so here is our base. It goes this way. And by the way, I believe there's a set of the diorama something dies that kind of cut this shape. I don't know if it's exact or not. I don't have those. So here's my card, and you can see I do like the um, glossy part of the raindrops. Now this time. I wanted to try using my raindrop embossing folder. It is part of the suite that um, Stampin' Up! announced would be a coordinating thing. And I don't know, this one I did not, this one I did. Oh, there, you can kind of see the bumpy of the raindrops. <coughs> this one not. Okay, let me grab my water real quick. You do a bunch of talking on these videos and my throat always gets dry. Okay, so this time I'm gonna use the raindrops. Now watch this because I didn't cut it big enough and I did that on purpose because your paper comes in 12 by 12, right? So if I can at all do fours and threes, I know those are gonna be divisible by 12. So I cut this to three by four, I believe. And I knew that my little turtle here could cover up my gap. 
Now, if you're not paper saving and not worried about it at all, what I would do is if you cut, you want to look at the direction of the rain. It's going this way, okay? You could cut your three, um, actually, I would turn it this way. Cut four and a quarter, okay, on the side, and then you would get three, um, actually, you'd get four pieces at three. Did I do that right? Okay, yes, if you cut it, no, the rain's going this way. <laughs> okay, well, anyway, you get what I'm saying. You can cut it four and a quarter by three, but I'm going to let my turtle cover up mine. All right, so again, I'm going to use liquid glue so I can wiggle my rain piece around just where I want it. And... Cover that inside where he doesn't show in the rain kind of straight. Okay, that's good. And then I'm gonna press this down, give that a second to dry. So that was the raindrops folder that I used on this one. Let me get all my other little pieces while that dries a second. So we have the umbrella. I love that little umbrella and the clouds and some turtles done for us. Now we have the turtle stamp in our stamp set this month, which is oh so cute. I do wish we had that turtle. There is a turtle in the coordinating one, but he's not quite like that. He's just as cute. He's just different. All right, and here's our turtle. And then, you know what, we can stamp our sentiment. Actually, that's probably dry enough. So let's add that to our card base. I just put little dots around so I don't get too much. You don't want the glue oozing out all over the place. And I'm gonna put a few on the DSP so it doesn't move around. The DSP is still available, last I looked. Now the stamp bundle, the coordinating bundle, is not available because the dies are um, out of stock. And I have that on here. So the bundle is unavailable because the dies are. And the predicted date for the dies to be back is March 16th. If you want the bundle, you can still get just the stamp set if that's something you would be interested in. All right, and now we need lots of dimensionals. Again, scrap dimensionals, and we have a cloud here, here, frog, and the umbrella. So when I do these together, I want to make sure that the, it covers up my, my cheap, <laughs> not covered up all the way whole. I do try to conserve my supplies all the time. So if you ever want tips of uh, making your supplies stretch, always check out my videos because I give little tips and all the time of how I do that. So let's see, put him here and the turtle. I want him on dimensionals as well. I'm going to use these. I think these are a little more flat. Okay, I already have those cut in half. Have I gone off screen? I put this grid sheet in there to try to help me remember what is the recording space that I have. Okay. Take him off. All right, now let's run him up. Oop, nope, we want the umbrella under him. And we want him walking kind of straight. Okay, that's good. And I, of course, I, I put everything on dimensionals to try to give it some interest. So let me cut these in 
the remaining in half. I probably could have already put these on to help the video along, but again, this video is to kind of make them as is, but to leave to show you how to use, <clears throat> keep the back side from, uh, oh, there he is. He's just upside down to keep the back side for alternates. One more over the frog. I love the cute little frog. So as you know, um, they had dyes available. Now they did sell out, but as you can see, there are frogs in the kit already done. And if you did not get in on the dyes or decided not to, because you don't have a die cut machine, he would be pretty easy to fussy cut out. All right, so let's put him up here. And now for our sentiment. I already have it on the Stamparatus. It was a label that I got ready before. All right. Now this one, I had a hard trouble getting it centered because of the squiggly line. So let's see how it is now. I think I moved it just a little bit. All right, I'm going to do him in Memento Black again. I have my little spot. And this one says, friends in any kind of weather. So I guess the turtle and frog are friends. And if you missed earlier how I showed you, see, I lined it up in the negative space. And that may have got on my washi tape. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to need to move in the book. The good thing of that is I can move that. Pick up just the R. And get that back in there. Okay. So. The magnets are sticking through my hands. All right, let me. Blot him dry so I don't get ink all over. Again, my chamois was rock hard solid, so he was not soaking very fast. So I left him in the sink. All right, and here is our sentiment, which of course, guess what? I'm going to put on dimensionals. So what do you guys think of the idea of making it a real card where you can write, have a space to write on the inside and then still have the other pieces for alternates. And of course we have the envelope. So there you go. There is our second card. And one last one. And see, we're going to have these pieces to work with alternates. So be sure and subscribe to my channel for when I come up with those. Now, lots of times I use either coordinating products or showcase some new products in the catalog. So not necessarily of the same theme that the kit is, but um, that's just kind of how I do them. <laughs> All right. So this is the piece we have left over. It's the blue sky. So again, I have the same three inch by four and three eighths piece of basic white that I'm gonna make my own blue. That would have been the inside of the card. And so here is the card I made. And I also added in these cute little loose daisy embellishments. And they were part of that suite. Now, these are also currently unavailable and they're supposed to be available February 19th. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, today's the 19th. They are unavailable as of today and they're estimated to be in around February 27th. So here is stuff that I've used. Now you notice I have this piggy, birthday piggy. I'm thinking I'm going to use him on some of the alternates. I'm not positive, but I thought I would point this out that the stamp set is still available and the dies for them are on the clearance rack for like $13. So if you think those are cute, it's a good price to grab those up in. All right, so. Okay, I need a card base. 
So on days where I'm not feeling very creative, I just sit and cut and score card bases so that I have them to grab. And I guess we're going to have to cut another base. All right, so let's get out the trimmer again. This is the back. I'm going to put him back in my envelope so he doesn't go missing. And we're going to trim this base. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'll go a little faster this time for time. So again, a regular size is four and a quarter. You want it at an eighth, or excuse me, a sixteenth. Flip it around and do another sixteenth, and that'd be at four and one eighth. All right, do each side. Regular is five and a half. Come over one notch and flip it around and do it again, which would be at five and three eighths. So basically we're taking an eighth of an inch off. I'm just doing it off each side so that we have an equal card base. And then we have this lovely piece for our alternate. <laughs> All right, let's put the trimmer away. So again, this time I'm going to use my larger blending brush just so it goes by faster. And I'm going to get my blue. Balmy Blue ink swatch that I used before. I'm going to put some Balmy Blue there. Okay. If you want to keep your mat from getting all messed up, you can put a piece of scrap paper there. All right. And I'm going to grab it all up. I'm probably swirling the camera, but I'm making you dizzy. All right, so I'm gonna start very lightly, just getting off some of the ink. Like you really can't tell any is coming on, but it is. And then I'm gonna go heavier handed to, don't need him, to get the blue on there. Now I did one more saving thing. <laughs> so this brass piece, it's a die cut piece. I actually, I cut it in half. So that's, let me get the two pieces and show you what I did. I don't know for sure that I'm gonna use them, but I thought I don't need to use that whole piece. So here's your die cuts that you get in your kit. And what I, I did, I didn't basically, I, I did it. I flipped it over and I traced, I, I measured it and made a notch of where half was. And then I traced it and I cut it out. So I used the top piece here and I'm gonna use the bottom piece. Again, I don't know for sure that I'm gonna use half for anything, but when I was making this, I thought I'll try. So this, fits in here and as you can see even the bottom doesn't have to be covered so I think I'm going to put that there let me try nope that's come down a little bit and that's okay all right or what's best yet is to put him in now, I am going to have to trim him off which I wanted you can see where I marked it. So I think I can cut it off there. Scissors. I'm gonna save a little room, make sure. So I still have a heel, because I can do him at that angle. And he's just sticking out a little bit. Okay, so let's glue him on first, because he goes there. Use my dots. So if you're following along with me on these alternates, if you have any questions, be sure and leave them in the comments below. Okay, so there's our heel, and now we're going to put our sky over the top of him. 
I think I did a little more sky than the original design. I'm not really sure. Okay, so flip them back over. I didn't do it close enough for the piece, did I? Okay. All right, and my sky. I have to get him off the end of the table to get him on there. All right, and so there we go. We made our own little landscape with glue all over us because I put it on the edge. Let me get him down a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry for a second um, while we, so I don't move it and get it out of the screen while we stamp our sentiment again. Last sentiment. This one uses this piece. Now I went ahead and punched all those out because my son, when I made some sons, I was making them all icky. But now I have to find where I put the label. <laughs> I thought I put one in each envelope for my kit, but obviously I did not. Well, rather than make you have to wait, we'll just assume we already have a sentiment, unless I run across them while I'm putting it on my base, but now I'm getting glue all over that. Let's get out our base and go ahead and put him on. Feel which side is bigger. I'm going to see if my glue is still active. And I'm going to put him over the top. That's good. Just kind of center it, press down and around. Okay, and then I already have a sun and we have some flowers. Now I only used one strip of the flowers. Um, I thought that was enough. Then we have the bunny, but we have to do our kite. I'm still looking for those labels while I get stuff out. So the kite is one of our stamps in the kit and you, you stamp the kite is here with your label. That just got all cattywampus. All right, so, so same thing. And actually I'm gonna do this one with you. So, you know, we can use this one further over away from other stamps. So what I do is I take out the die cut. All right, you wanna anchor those down and you find your kite stamp. Mine was on a block. I tried to do it with a block last time. And actually what I'm gonna do since he has a border, is I'm gonna leave him in there and I may have to get my head in the video for this, but you see the lines of the, of the kite? I don't know if you can see that. Of course, I can't find a piece of paper. There's line, there it is, the lines. You wanna line that up with the black part of the kite. Again, I may have to get my little head in here. Oops, put him back in the spot where he belongs. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna close my stamparatus, pick that up, and I'm gonna make sure it's all back in the corner again because he was Kind of stuck. Be careful with your magnets, guys. I usually don't have them both out because they can clang together and break. But I've found what he doesn't stamp down there. That I need one here and one here. All right, so let's ink him up with our Mango Melody. And let me use, I'm not going to use my big pad. My, I had a Mango Melody uninked spot that I made myself because I didn't ever have one from Paper Pumpkin. But mine is getting pretty dry of ink, so I'm going to open up this new one that we got in our kit. I just take scissors and go along the side, and eventually he comes open. All right, he ought to be nice and juicy. The other one I had to do twice. 
All right, and then hover, kind of make sure it is, and then press. And then I also saw that there is a, there's a kite in the stamp set. Oh, there's a die, but we can't get the dies right now. There's a die, I think, that cuts out the um, kite that then this stamp would work in. So that's kind of cool. So it was off just a little, but I'm not worried about that at all because it kind of looks um, like you're getting a reflection. From the sky. So we stamped him. Let me clean him off so I don't get mango melody everywhere. I'm gonna leave him open because he's probably wet. All right, so we have all of our components. We have the flowers which need to tuck under there. I'm going to kind of place things first before I commit. Get my example there. Now my dimensionals disappeared <laughs> because I was looking for that label. So I'll just go into my little bucket of goodies and get more. Here's a whole sheet. Probably why I have so many scraps. Because when I clean up, I find everything, which is good. Put one on each ear of the bunny. I kind of move the backing. So, all right, bunny and then kite. Now, I do know on the kite, I use little bitty pieces of dimensionals on that piece. I think I did better freehanding, didn't I? Trying to go fast here because I, I figured this might be a long video doing all of them. So when I need a little bitty piece, I'd like to find that strip. Give me just a second to see if I can find it real quick. I probably have a strip in here. I do. I have a little bitty piece of the tiny ones. So I'm going to get the piece in between and put it on the string best I can without it showing. Come back up. I don't have a lot of, a lot of leeway room. That's pretty good. And I may just take him and cut him extra fine. He went flying, but I found him. Just to keep the string up. Okay. I'm not going to peel it off yet. He's going to go there. And then, of course, our sun. I am going to put the sun on dimensionals. I love putting everything on dimensionals that I can. Okay. So how many of you have your kit already? Mine, I, I, in my unboxing, I let you know that mine hadn't come yet. So my neighbors had, so she let me use it to do the unboxing. And mine came yesterday that I'm going to give to her. All right, so do I like the flowers there? I'm going to bring the flowers down just a little bit. All right, and then let's commit those down. to come just under the grass a little bit. Okay, there's our flowers. And we also have a flower stamp in our kit to use over and over. Getting lots of dimensional backings. I find them all over my house. Okay, and then the kite, cute little kite. Kind of makes us look forward to spring. We're going to go from heater, air, heaters to air conditioners. I think here 
on Tuesday it's supposed to be 80. All right, so how do I, I don't want my kite to cover up a flower, so he's going to be really high in the sky. All right, and then I took my little daisy embellishments, and here is where I love to use the adhesive dots. So um, I get my little take your pick tool somewhere. Maybe. Here it is. And I just wanted to put these around everywhere. I know flowers don't belong in the sky, but it's an embellishment. It's not meant to be a real flower. And then I would put one on the sentiment strip, which I didn't take the time to look. So let me just take the backing off of these. And here's a tip. Like you notice I don't have my little um, gummy part. I actually take it out because I end up twisting it and wasting my putty. So I just leave it out and I just use it like this. So let's put a daisy. And these are pretty flat, but they're kind of squishy and interesting. So we'll put that one there. And then when I find my sentiment strips, we will add that there. So these are my, um, make it a real card. So you can write on the inside alternates using the design and the elements in the kit. As I said, I will be, my next task is making alternates with all the extra backing pieces. So we have these and we have uh, the blue, I probably won't use that because I have that in DSP. And then, of course, the pink one that I haven't cut yet. So um, this is, of course, for my third set. I only make two to start with, one to show and one to make with you guys. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, if you're following along with me, I will be posting the next alternates in a couple of days. I know I have plans. Uh... Tuesday and Wednesday part of the day but I hope to make these by Monday and then share them as soon as I have a moment to record and make the alternates with you but in the meantime you can make these and have all your other supplies ready to go we also have the envelopes that we can cut up and use as well so I hope you've enjoyed this video and um, if you have any kind comments I would love to read them below and if you're a new subscriber, let me know that as well. And in our next one, we may have a prize drawing where you guys can choose which one of my uh, cards you would like mailed. So um, be sure and subscribe so that you're in on that. And until the next time, I'll see you again. Bye-bye.